Good morning, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Talington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi. We're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And today we're gonna move on to a whole series, and I'm happy to take suggestions on this, of things that we can learn from dogs. Dogs have so many amazing qualities, and with everything going on, a lot of people are a, more reliant on their dogs if they're working out of the house, and B, spending more time with their dogs. <laughs> so I think that we're all a little bit more in touch with what our dogs and pets in general can give us. But I'm gonna really focus on dogs because I have dogs, I've always had dogs, that's what I know. <laughs> but I think the same can be said of cats and rabbits, they're just different. So the first thing that people have always said to me about dogs, and I mean, there's many things, but. One of the things we always know is that dogs are loyal. And what is that quality of loyalty? What's that mean? You know, we've always heard that expression, man's best friend, now woman, human's best friend, is a dog. And part of why we can say that is because of their incredible loyalty. What loyalty really is, is support, allegiance, staying on your side, even if you're wrong, even if you don't know what you're doing, your dog is loyal to you. They are supporting you. They are um, on your side. And I think that's one of the things we love about dogs in particular that we don't always find in humans. Um, and we look for this in humans. I mean, it's a, a human need to want loyalty. And yet we don't often find it. And when we do, it is spectacular. And I saw a few things when I was perusing the internet the other day. Um, lists of things that uh, people think you need in a good relationship and that are characteristics of loyalty. And I think that we can put a spin on that and see that every one of them applies to dogs. One of the first things they said <clears throat> that you need for a good relationship is a positive outlook in that other person, which would be you for them. <laughs> and how many of us can say that our dog is depressed and mopes around the house? Yes, I've seen that when another pet has passed away or a family member. But for the most part, dogs have a positive outlook. They wanna play, they wanna go outside, they're up for anything you wanna do, they wanna hang with you. They have a, a always attitude of life's great. And in fact, for a lot of dogs, life is great, but even dogs that have been rescued from horrible situations. I mean, one of the most optimistic pets I've known was this little corgi named Buddy who came to my friend Miriam. I hope you're watching Miriam, I'll, I'll put this on your page and he was missing half of both back legs, which had been frozen or lost in some horrible, horrible way that he was being kept before she had him. But that little buddy, he greeted every day with happiness. He wanted to go outside. He let her try 50 different kinds of things on his piggies so that he could go out. He would go in the stroller. He liked the other dogs. Positive outlook, critical aspect of loyalty. Another important thing that our dogs do that's an aspect of their loyalty is connect with us. Dogs want to be with us. It is in their nature to be in a pack. Like humans, dogs die when they're alone. It's a very rare canid that is a lone species. Um, even if they spend time alone, they have you know, a pack and they come together to raise the offspring. Foxes, different types of foxes, the father will disappear for a couple of months, but come back and stay with the female and the pups throughout the spring. So there's a desire to have commitment, to be part of a bigger group. This is one of the things that we see in science that's evolving in dogs. They wanna look at us because we connect by looking. And so dogs are learning to tolerate looking at us. And wolves don't do that. They've done tons of studies. To a wolf, a stare is and there's many kinds of stares. We've also learned that because we're so dumb. We think they're all the same. But when you look at a wolf, most of the time they see that as a little bit threatening. But when you look at most dogs, they perceive that as a willingness to connect, especially if you do it in what Sally Swift and Linda Tellington have called soft eyes, you know, a nice kind of gaze where you're not staring at them, but you're just kind of taking in the whole picture. That desire to connect is hardwired to the dogs and to us. Another thing that dogs give us in terms of loyalty is that they like routine. They wanna eat at the same time every day, walk at the same time, and that ties us to a connection. 
because we know that every day the dog will wake us up and want food and that at a certain point in the day the dog is going to want his walk and his dinner and go out and come in and play with the cat and all the things that dogs do and that invokes our loyalty to be able to stand by them and do these things another thing about dogs and this is true for all animals is that they are mostly okay with uncertainty because they don't have control over their daily lives they can't say oh if mom doesn't come home by five i'm going to get my own dinner and they just wait loyally by the window by the door for us to come home and get them dinner so this being okay with not knowing how things are that's a huge lesson right now because all these states are reopening and some of them like mine the guidelines are unclear businesses don't know what they're doing and you just have to be okay with it because you you can't do anything else except be okay getting worried just gets you upset and it doesn't accomplish anything one of the most important aspects of our dogs and their loyalty is that a tick on your snootin'? oh thank god it's oh yes it is well we'll be getting that later poor guy they're so bad this year. Anyway, another thing is that our dogs are empathetic. That comes from their desire to connect with us, with their pack mentality. They want to be with us. That is another aspect of what makes a good relationship, and that is a big part of loyalty and a big part of being with dogs. Oh, and the other thing that dogs have, oh, I can see that tick moving around now, <laughs> is they have a very strong sense of self. They know their boundaries. They know who they are. They are not walking around feeling insecure for the most part. Some rescue dogs are, and I've worked with plenty of them. But for the most part, they have a strong sense of who they are. And that makes a better connection with some other being. And this is, I think, an issue for a lot of human relationships is that, you know, you want to connect with somebody who doesn't have a strong sense of who they are or a strong sense of self-worth or lovability. And that makes it so much harder to give them the thing they want. So having a strong sense of self is a huge lesson we can get from dogs and it's a huge aspect of loyalty. Um, and then there's the other part that's the flip side of being positive, which is that you get over being disappointed pretty quickly. You know, if your dog eats at four and you don't get home till six and you give him his dinner at six, those two hours of wishing you were there to feed him out the window. He's so glad and happy that you fed him at all <laughs> that it makes you really bond with your dog and your dog wants to bond with you. So getting over disappointment is another part of loyalty. And so many of us have a hard time doing that with humans in our lives. Um, and a huge part of loyalty is being reliable. Our dogs are always there for us. You come home from work, they listen to you. You want to go outside, they want to go for a walk. You want to play with their neighbor friend, they're excited to go and do that too. So they are very, you know what they're going to do. Your dog is not, like right now, Tristan's not going to turn and bite me. Reliable. Humans are not so good with that. And in fact, one of my closest friends, who's my ex-husband, this is one of his chief characteristics, is that he's really reliable. And that is unusual. I can't say I know five people in my life that I would say are reliable, but he is the top of that list. And so are all the dogs I've had. And one of the other things about loyalty that I think dogs can talk to us about and show us is how to be a good communicator. When we are having a problem with our dog or a behavior issue or a training issue, it's usually because we're the one falling down on communication. When you're asking the dog to sit and he doesn't want to sit, I mean, I've seen this. I go to these um, training classes for rally and obedience and I see dogs that are highly trained that don't want to sit. Is that because, you know, they are dumb and they're not listening? No. Most of the time it's because they have pain in their back or their hind end or their tail or the floor is slippery and they're afraid or they're getting old or they're scared about the other dog across the room who's looking at them a little viciously. So we need to be super communicators because our dogs communicate with us all the time. They're always telling us things and we are the ones who misinterpret. And in fact, somebody on one of the Corgi lists yesterday was saying that their dog has been growling at the children and actually nipped a three-year-old and it's a Corgi. And of course they're nippers, they're herders. However, I mean, the response from people was what was so interesting. 
Now I know as a T-Touch practitioner and a physical therapist that that dog's probably got pain in his body. Probably there was a time when they didn't see what the kids were doing. The dog was injured. The dog is now nervous. The dog is only three or four, but it is a corgi. So the chance of something in the back or the hips going off are pretty great. So, you know, and many dogs that come to me have been to the vet just like this dog. And he said, oh, fine, gross evaluation, fine. But you know what, until you use the highly skilled manual techniques that I know, and that plenty of other animal body workers know, and even Reiki practitioners, you can't really assess whether that dog is okay. If he has this behavior, he is telling you that he's got a problem. And the problem is not dominance. He does not want to dominate. Usually with kids, dogs wanna be left alone. And the growling and the snarking is trying to get away. And one of the things they said was that the dog um, growls at the kids when they try to you know, push him off his spot on the chair or the sofa, which could sound like dominance, but it also is, I'm, I'm not feeling that good. I'm comfortable here. I don't wanna move. And the way you're pushing me, it's hard to get a three-year-old to push as gently as you would yourself. So I think there's a lot going on here. Almost every dog I've ever worked with who has a problem with kids has been pretty badly injured by kids, kids sitting on them, you know, trying to move them by pulling a leg in the position it doesn't go in, things like that. So the dogs get really wary. And that gets back to communication. If your dog is not acting the way that he did for three years, um, then there's a problem that's going on with him and you need to pay attention to that. It is not a behavior issue. 90% of the time behavior comes from body issues. And that's one of the great gifts Linda Tellington has given us. So we are so lucky to have dogs in our lives to teach us about loyalty because all of these things I went through that are aspects of good relationships, we can learn from our dogs. And we are lucky to have relationships with dogs. And as much as it's tragic when we lose one, and it really is beyond tragic when we lose one, um, I think it's worthwhile to have a lifetime of time with dogs. Right, Tristan? And that tick on your mouth, he's gonna have to go away. All right, well, thanks for joining us today for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi. We will be back tomorrow, which is Friday, and then we'll take a break on the weekend, and we're gonna continue through many traits that I believe dogs exhibit and that we can learn great things from because, boy, they are wonderful teachers. We're lucky they wanna be with us. Great, right, Tristan? Thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day, and be loyal to your dog and the other people in your life, too.